So uh, now on to another award, uh, the Commercial Award, uh, which celebrates an activity that delivers or develops commercial value in the context of new products, tools, or services that build on, incorporate, or enhance the library's digital content. Um, the award will be introduced by my colleague, Jess Mahoney, um, Business Programs Manager at the British Library. Jess manages uh, the Business Audiences Partnership Strategy and Programming at the BL's Business and Intellectual Property Centre, delivering services for entrepreneurs and small and medium en enterprises. She has supported the development and growth of the library's national network of business and IP centres based in city libraries across the UK. So Jess Mahoney. Hi everyone, thanks Mahendra for the introduction. So I'm Jess Mahoney, business programs manager here at the library, which means that I essentially curate and program everything that we do that is aimed at supporting business owners, entrepreneurs and commercial audiences at the library to really maximise our collections and get the most out of them. I'm based in our business and IP centre, which is the library's dedicated resource for entrepreneurs and we're there day in, day out to support people from all walks of life to start, protect and to grow successful businesses, whatever field that's in. Uh, it's an incredibly busy part of the library. Last year we had nearly 70,000 people come in and use our collections. And we're also uh, great at attracting diverse audiences. So of the people who come in, around about 60% are women and then around about 45% are actually from ethnic minority backgrounds. So it's an incredibly diverse and active place to spend time. Um, as the business team, we're really interested in how people are using the library's collections and the library's digital collections specifically to uh, come up with new business ideas, to bring new products to market, and of course, ultimately, to make money uh, in the business team. We're not afraid to be concerned with that grubby issue of profit. So it's been really interesting to look at some of the entries for this award for that reason. Um, what I'd like to say as well is if there's anyone in the audience who's thinking maybe they've got a business idea, perhaps is inspired by some of our collections, then do come in and access some of our programming. We run workshops day in, day out, um, throughout the week, starting from 10 in the morning and finishing sort of half eight in the evening. Um, so there's a really wide range of topics. And particularly at the moment, we're really focusing on sessions at the kind of intersection between culture and business. So we're working with lots of authors to kind of help them commercialize their products and help them become more profitable by looking at merchandising and licensing opportunities, things like that. Um, so it would be great to see you come back and use the library and then maybe enter this category next year. Um, we had some amazing entries for the commercial awards, and there are three in particular that I'm going to highlight this afternoon. Uh, the first entry that I'd like to draw attention to is the Seder Oneg Shabos Bencher by David Zvi Kalman. And David is uh, based at the University of Pennsylvania in the US, um, and this is a beautiful book. It's a contemporary take on the Jewish Bencher book. Uh, so a small book typically, typically containing the grace after meals, a selection of Sabbath songs, um, and various other frequently recited short prayers. So using content from our archives, uh, from the British Library's digitized Hebrew manuscripts collection, and also images from our 19th century digitized books collection at Flickr, David has produced this beautiful book that's actually sold over 10,000 copies and is now in its third edition. So well done, David. I think selling 10,000 copies of any book in today's market is a real achievement. Um, the second entry that I'd like to draw your attention to is Greetings from the British Library by Monique Spack. Um, so this was created as a Google Slides add-on, which effectively allows the user to use to, to insert British Library public domain images to create greetings cards and personalised uh, sort of copy and design. So the add-on effectively fetches images from British Library photo stream at Flickr Commons um, and allows users to conduct a natural language search to really get the most of the digital content that's available. Um, within the add-on, users can also type in a word and then replace any letter in that word with decorative items from the photo stream. So that's a really good one to know about if anyone's thinking of creating their own Christmas cards in the run-up to the season. Uh, the third entry that I'd like to talk about is um, Nabil Nayal's fashion presentation at London Fashion Week, the library collection. So Nabil is a fashion designer based in Leeds. His spring-summer 2019 fashion collection took its inspiration from digitised Elizabethan-era manuscripts here at the British Library. 
Uh, he's had several fashion shows, events and commissions, including one which was actually held here at the library, which is where this picture is from. This was in our cafe space, which I don't think has been used for anything quite that creative before, so it's really visually impactful. Um, and he's currently working with the British Library and Fashion Colleges Council to organise a fashion competition for final year undergraduates and master's fashion students here at the library. So really encouraging those to access our collections as well in really exciting and creative ways. And the runner-up in the commercial awards is... David Zvi Kalman for the Seder Oneg Shabos Bencher. And I think, Mahendra, we've got a satellite link. Is that right? Well, sort of. Sort of. It's a recording that he's Terribly high tech today. Hello from Philadelphia to everyone at British Library Labs. I'm sorry I cannot be there in person. I'm very grateful to the British Library for recognizing this project. The Bencher is a very, very old Hebrew book containing basic prayers and songs. Uh, and Seder Onuk Shabbos started in 2014 as an attempt by myself and by other graduate students to bring together a book which has been published continuously for more than half a millennium, to bring it back to its roots after a century of having become uh, increasingly sparse, often free of images altogether as a result of uh, pressures by printers to uh, make the book as small and as cheap as possible. Uh, the British Library's resources really helped us in this process uh, made this a task that's not, that was not only doable, but doable um, with relative speed, uh, which is very important uh, towards getting it done. Um, in the history of Jewish printing, there are many examples of printers borrowing each other's illustrations, often having the illustrations move from work to work to work, and I'm, I'm really glad that we were able to continue this tradition. Uh, others have benefited immensely from this work as well, and I think it's really up the bar for what a work in this genre can look like. Um, and so I hope other works are produced that look like this as well. Um, it's become increasingly popular um, um, each year. And uh, so thank you again to everyone at the British Library Labs. Hey. Great to hear from David there. And I think a fantastic example, that one, of ways in which a text that's really ancient has been breathed new life by access in digital collections, which is a great demonstration of what this award can do. Uh, but now on to the winner in this category... And the award goes to Nabil Neal for the library collection at London Fashion Week. And collecting the prize on Nabil's behalf is Jennifer Davis, who will say a few words and introduce uh, a video of one of the fashion shows. Hello, everybody. Um, so firstly, thank you very much to the British Library for this award. Nabil sends his apologies. He would love to be here today, but he's actually uh, lecturing fashion students from London College of Fashion about the importance of research. So quite fitting, really. Um, but when we started this, um, essentially research has always been at the core of our brand. Nabil's been obsessed with the Elizabethan era for as long as he can remember and um, during the course of doing his MA at the Royal College of Art which he was he won a scholarship to do by the British Fashion Council was able to delve into that era uh, more and more um, to the extent that he actually then did a PhD at Manchester Metropolitan University um, in Elizabethan dress and did a series of six collections which formed his research output entitled Elizabethan Sportswear where he <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Might need some explaining. <laughs> um, essentially looking at historic crafts and designs from the era, era and juxtaposing those with modern innovative technologies and seeing technology as a new form of craft, um, essentially being able to, I guess, recontextualize some of these incredible pieces. So he I'm glad to say, got his PhD awarded to him in July of this year. And it also coincided with us taking the leap forward to doing our first ever presentation on the official London Fashion Week schedule in September. So we decided we want, really wanted to use this as a platform to shine a light on the importance of research in fashion design, um, particularly as we are in a time where fashion education is receiving quite a lot of cuts. And we thought, well, wouldn't it be fantastic to be able to do something with the digital archives at the British Library? So we started researching that and were amazed by the wealth of Elizabethan archives that are, are here, including the famous Tilbury speech, which Elizabeth I delivered to the troops uh, before the invasion of the Armada. And so 
we thought, well, how about if we took it one step further and brought Fashion Week to the British Library and not only used the archives in the collection, but had the whole show. And I'm glad to say that that is what we achieved. Um, we managed to get the British Library on Vogue magazine. Even Rolly got a shout out, so I think we did quite well. <laughs> um, but I think it was a great collaboration. Um, we're very, very thankful to the whole team at the British Library who made it happen. And we have since taken the collection to, to Paris, where we do all our sales. And I'm pleased to say that Next year, it will be going into stores in countries all over the world, in international department stores that are world famous. Um, and we hope to continue working with the library and sort of shining a light on the archives, which I'm sure Colette will explain now. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Um, um, I'm an independent consultant working with the British um, Library. I'm Colette Taylor, by the way. And it's a collaboration with the British Fashion Council. And that, that collaboration is really to raise awareness for the next generation of fashion researchers about the wealth and, uh, of the library collections. But again, to make that you know, really um, accessible. So the online um, collections have been wonderful for inspiring designers. I hope you agree. This is one yes. part of the collection here. <laughs> We've got a very short video that we'll sh uh, to show you in a minute, which will actually show you Nabil's work. So I won't go into detail about that. It's part of a bigger project I'm working on with the library to say to raise this awareness. <coughs> And um, part of that, Jess mentioned, last year we ran the first fashion research competition for students and we'll be running another one now. The next masterclass is next week and Nabil will be joining us to inspire those students. The judging will be in January. Um, as part, it's very you know, just going back to the widening participation element of actually being ha having the online services. Our last winner came from Scotland. She wasn't able to actually physically come in the library, but she worked with Mahendra. She used the Flickr co uh, Commons collection, um, um, Women of the World images. We've now been able to establish two um, dedicated fashion resource on the British Library website, which we'll, we will keep updating. Um, but just also to highlight the fact, just not the online services, but in terms of the commercial background, the creative designers do need that business help and element. I mean, it's so crucial. Jen's a great example of an excellent creative <laughs> and business manager. And um, I know, Jess, you, you certainly support a range of designers through the centre. We do. And in fact, in the business and IP centre itself, 30% of our users are from the creative industries, which I think really demonstrates that, you know, creative skills are fantastic and necessary, but with that business acumen and the ability to strategize and to forward plan and really understand the figures and yeah. the strategy and processes that you need, you can stand a much better chance of commercialising your creative output. Thank you, exactly. So, so just before we show the film, that's um, exactly with, I think you've had, um, I just thought the, the images we saw this morning, was it Richard Wright, I think, if he's still here, and he showed the King's Tower, which you'll see in a minute, with that sort of image of the cascade of books. Well, I can show you at midnight the night before <laughs> we were setting up, and uh, we actually used some books, not British Library books, I can stress, no. <laughs> <laughs> and we scattered them around, and um, I said, Jen and I were ready to bring fashion into the library, but I saw from my colleague, Slaysa Maya Marichami, <laughs> head of higher education, who is uh, supporting us, from her face I could see the library perhaps wasn't quite ready for fashion, <laughs> I hope the, uh, the video now, there were three words used this morning, I think, to combine research, um, um, pleasure and inspiration. And I hope our video does that. <laughs> Thank you. Today is a collaboration that we have with the British Fashion Council, which is encouraging fashion students to embrace research in creating their collections. I'm Nabil Nayal, and I'm here at the British Library to showcase my first collection after finishing my PhD. Here today we have press and buyers from all around the world who've come to see Nabil's work and it's fantastic that he can do that in a setting that's as incredible as the British Library. I spent a lot of time here trying to work out what I was going to do with my collections and my research. Wouldn't it be amazing to do my first presentation as part of London Fashion Week here in this space? The library's never done this before, so to be able to be the first designer to do this was a real honour. I'm Sarah Moa, I'm Ambassador for Emerging Talent for the British Fashion Council, which means I spot talent in colleges and uh, help to nurture them through to becoming designers. This just feels like such an amazingly appropriate place for Nabil to be showing this collection because he, he indeed went on to complete a PhD and studied here. My PhD was focused on Elizabethan dress, which I clashed with contemporary sports by technology and I spent a lot of time researching all those concepts, trying to work out what I was going to do with my collections and my research. 
One of the images that he used was the Tilbury speech of Elizabeth I. The other one was from the collection item that shows the Elizabeth I funeral procession. We were delighted for him to use it and as well as him using it, we hope that that's an example to other creatives that they can come and use public domain images in the library and indeed in other similar institutions. Book learning, research, primary research, it's something that's always been in British fashion education. Young people really understand the nuances and the layers of history that go into, into garments. I mean, you can see how, how beautiful the result is. It's, uh, it's modern and applicable today, but it really comes from somewhere. You can't just learn off from the internet because if you, if you just use Google, you're, you're looking at things which are, everyone can, can have access to. Everybody who's good researches. We have created on our website a dedicated space that tells them a little bit more about collections and how they might be relevant for their research. The British Fashion Council, Colleges Council and the British Library are now collaborating to run a competition for our fashion design students. There will be a brief set in conjunction with Nabil that will take his aesthetic and be very research focused to really learn about and understand the collections that are available here at the British Library and really help them learn the skills and the tools that are needed to do effective and exciting research. It's going to be incredible to work with a fashion design competition and to hopefully bring through a new generation of students who are going to be able to use this library in incredible ways. Amazing. So congratulations to Nabil, to Jennifer and Colette on a fantastic example there, I think, of how library collections can really be brought to life in incredibly exciting and thrilling ways through proper research. So well done there. Uh, Jennifer, I have to present oh, you with this. Thank you. Thank you very much.